The fear of a potential AI takeover has engulfed the whole world. In this time, what's coming handy is the art of upskilling and reskilling. And online education platforms like Coursera are helping not only students but also professionals to upskill, reskill, and become more employable. Today, I'm going to be joined by Mr. Raghav Gupta, who's the APAC and India head for Coursera, and he'll be throwing light on the education trends they're picking up in India. So let's go. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'd like to start by asking, uh, what is the key difference of trends you've seen in India versus other countries that Coursera has presence in? Yeah, I think uh, what we are seeing is, look, the importance of education is probably higher in India for all of us than elsewhere. Um, and there are lots of similarities and I'll talk about those as well, right? But we are seeing a lot of students in higher education want to come to Coursera. Um, you know, we do have some very strong institutions in higher education in India, but given size of a higher education ecosystem, there's a lot of quality still left to be desired. And so a lot of students do come to Coursera, probably more than other parts of the world. And then in working professionals, in companies, in government organizations, the need for, you know, uh, digital skills, the need for uh, leadership skills, which accelerated quite significantly. Uh, uh, through the pandemic, we've seen a lot of uh, resonance of that as well. Um, for for Coursera in India, you know, it's our second largest uh, learner base outside of the US. And the reason it's accelerating is because we're seeing a lot of, you know, value in terms of what uh, people want. Um, we're expecting India will become bigger than Europe on the Coursera platform later this year. So the number of people coming to learn on Coursera will be higher than all of Europe put together. And like I said, it's because of these reasons. Right. Uh, are there any unique challenges that are unique to India versus the US or a European market? Because in India, uh, rise of edtech is very new. Uh, it is only during the pandemic that we shifted to online classrooms. Before that, it was a very traditional setup that you, even if you're working, you quit your job and you go back to college or you go back to school and then you come back to your professional environment. Uh, with Coursera changing those dynamics, we see people taking two jobs and still studying on the side. Uh, what are the challenges that are specifically unique to India? So if you look at uh, who the individual is and what might be their challenges, right? Um, firstly, depending on which part of the country you're in, and we are seeing lesser and lesser of this, but access used to be a challenge, right? Uh, did you have good quality internet? Did you have a mobile device, etc.? It used to be a challenge, but obviously with uh, availability of uh, good quality internet, that is lesser the case. Uh, as one would expect, compared to other parts of the world, the usage of mobile is a lot more on Coursera in India than other parts of the world. And what we've actively done over the years is almost about 95% of the content on the Coursera platform can be consumed on a mobile device as well. Also, you know, you can download videos in lower quality, you can download when you're on Wi-Fi and watch it when you're offline and things like that. So that is one element. The second element that I would say which is distinct in India is globally, you know, the split between men and women learning on the Coursera platform is roughly half and half as one would want it to be. In India, we still see a lot more men coming to learn on the Coursera platform. About 60-62% are men, the rest are women. But we've seen a growth in the learning of uh, you know, women learners on Coursera during the pandemic. Number of women learning grew more. And what was also interesting is the number of women taking STEM subjects grew a lot more. And what it told us is that while you know, women were impacted more during the pandemic uh, as a result of you know, going back home and all of that, the desire to learn and the desire to be a part of technology and digital roles was high and obviously online provides you that opportunity. The third thing I would call out is given India's size of technology services, IT services as an industry, uh, amongst the various industries that we work with compared to let's say the US or Europe, the largest industries that we serve in the US are financial services, uh, healthcare and so on. While in India, we see a lot of resonance of learning on Coursera in IT services, just given size of the industry. So those would be some of the, I would say, the differences per se. Sure. Uh, we're living in times of chat GPT and what is being potentially seen as an AI takeover. There's fear among uh, professionals that their jobs might get redundant in a, coming, in, in a coming few years and they'd be replaced by AI bots. Uh, how fair do you think are they to think all of this? And one of the things that industry leaders have said that upskilling and reskilling is a need of the hour. And Coursera is focusing on that. So if you could take us through that. 
I mean, any of us who, you know, use chat GPT for the first time was, were blown away, right, with what all it can do. Um, I mean, of course, the jury is still out there in terms of what all the implications will be, but a few things are starting to become clear. Uh, initially, the impact of automation of AI was expected on largely repeatable and manual jobs, right? And so a lot of manufacturing jobs, a lot of, you know, repetitive human jobs in accounting, claims processing, etc., etc., were the ones who started getting automated earlier. Typically, many of these were jobs which required lower levels of education. So if you did not have a degree, if you had, you know, a basic diploma, or, you know, you just went to uh, high school, those were the areas where we were expecting to see bigger implication. What Chat GPT has obviously done is it has started impacting higher skilled jobs, knowledge workers and so on. And what it is telling us is that look, the need for skilling which all of us saw accelerating during the pandemic because of digitization now is al also accelerating further if that was even possible because of Chat GPT. In all of this, one thing which is very consistent is the need for leadership skills and human skills, right? Because in any time of rapid change, that's where uh, leaders need to come in. The one thing which is important that we have seen is unlike, you know, traditional models of leadership where um, senior business leaders would, would be the ones who would typically get a lot of leadership training. I think we are increasingly seeing companies say, look, everybody should be provided leadership learning. So if you're a junior person in the organization, the focus needs to be on leading yourself, right? Your emotional intelligence, your interpersonal relationships, your ability to manage change, your ability to tell stories. So those would be self-leadership skills, while a business leader might be responsible for the strategy of the organization, you know, some of the key digital initiatives and so on. So Chad GPT can't be a leader? Chat GPT cannot come in and replace those. At least that's what we know so far. Right. Um, like we were talking about Chat GPT taking over jobs, earlier there were fears that it would come after redundant jobs, especially when uh, digitization happened during the pandemic. We recently saw the skills of Chat GPT extend to creative skills as well. They can write movies, they can direct plays. There are, in fact, books being written out there by Chat GPT. Uh, how do you think this skills bridge will uh, Coursera be able to fill? Um, so we are approaching it in a few different ways, right? We are saying, look, firstly, it's helpful f to think about a generative AI platform as a thought partner. Um, as a business leader, I might be thinking about any element of, you know, my work and I can use chat GPT as a thought partner. Chances are it may not replace what I do as a worker or as a business leader, but it can be a very powerful thought partner to help refine my thoughts. Now, what we are thinking about is that, look, um, a, a learner might want to learn about using Chat GPT. So how do we create content related to Chat GPT? That's one part of it. Second would be how do we integrate Chat GPT into the learning itself so that that learning can be more personalized, it can be interactive, uh, keeping in mind that there are risks associated as well. How do you bring information which is reliable information into the learning? Because the Coursera belief is that while education is extremely important, the content for education should come from experts. And today, the content on our platform comes from, you know, top 200 universities and about 100 companies. And so how do we integrate technologies like ChatGPT, something that we are actively looking at? Sure. Uh, like you said, it comes from big universities. Coursera sort of started with the, the, with the likes of Stanford and UPenn and Northwestern. Uh, is there any localization of that? Will you be tying up with Indian universities? Yeah, we've been actively working on that over the last two, three years. And today there are 16 leading universities in the country and eight companies who author content on the Coursera platform. They create short courses, which are typically 10 to 15 hours. They create specializations and also now fully online degrees. So in the, and these are broadly, you know, in um, technology, in data science and in uh, business. So I'm Ahmedabad is creating content on the Coursera platform. IIT Bombay, IIT Rudki, IIT Guwahati, uh, Bits Pilani, Ashoka University. And then companies like PwC, like LNT, uh, companies like Tally for accounting uh, software and so on. Uh, so they are creating content. 
and some of these leading institutions are also creating fully online degrees on Coursera. You know, the new education policy has been very encouraging about online and online degrees. And uh, uh, a few months ago, we launched uh, a degree with Bits Pilani, which is a BSc computer science, uh, which you can take fully online on Coursera. It opens up the access for a lot of people to come and take that degree from a top institution. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, then it sets them up for a career in a you know high demand role uh, with exciting uh, prospects as well. Uh, very recently, we've announced uh, an online MB, uh, postgraduate diploma in management with uh, SPJN Institute of Management and Research, and again a top institution which is now going to offer. And what's exciting in all of this is you know we are taking top Indian universities and making them available to learners in India, but we are also seeing a lot of people outside of India wanting to come and learn from these institutions. So, you know, taking the best of India to the rest of the world, I think, can be very exciting as well. Sure. Um, it was in, recently, it has been reported that when a person enrolls for an engineering, let's say, uh, but when they are hired, there's a lot of gap that is seen in terms of skills. And companies sort of emphasize that universities should prepare employees to be employable. But because they have to undergo training and additional costs, how does Coursera work towards bridging this gap? Yeah, I think firstly the problem is coming uh, because of two reasons, right? The problem is coming because of a higher education system which may not always have the levels of quality and employability that industry might desire. The second element of this is also that industry itself has been changing so fast that sometimes it's hard for higher education to keep up because, you know, this is not a challenge only for Indian higher education. I hear this in other parts of the world as well. Uh, I hear this in Malaysia, I hear this in Thailand, I hear this in Singapore and so on. What One of the things that we've done over the last one year or so is we've built out what we call Career Academy. Now, we've been hearing from industry that, look, if the skills students are coming out with are not what industry necessarily needs and a lot of these engineers are not employable, we went to industry and said, why don't we work with you in creating content that can be then made available to students while they're on campus. We also worked with McKinsey about two, two and a half years ago to say, look, when students are coming out of campus, what are those entry level jobs that are in high demand that can be learned digitally and possibly are in the domains of computer science, data science, management, which are where a lot of job opportunities are coming up. And they gave us a list of about 75 such roles. And we've been working on creating what we call industry micro-credentials for these roles. Um, we started with Google, and Google created an IT support uh, industry certificate on Coursera. Today, there are about 36 of these industry micro-credentials. And what we're doing is we, we are taking Career Academy, we're going to a campus, um, and we are saying, look, why don't you integrate this as a part of your curricula, as a part of your career services. Students can take a Google Data Analytics certificate. Students can take um, social media marketing from uh, Facebook or Meta and get credit for learning on that particular certificate. And then when they go into interviews, then the employer can see, look, along with a degree from a good quality institution, you've also done an industry micro-credential, and hopefully then you have the skills which help you succeed in your jobs as well. So Career Academy is one of the approaches that we are taking to complement what campuses are teaching. Sure. Um, Indian edtech scenario right now seems to be struggling. We saw massive layoffs coming in from the biggest names in the country. How is Coursera trying to keep up with this landscape change? Um, I mean, for us, the focus continues to be largely the same, right? How do we bring high quality value to learners, whether they are coming to us from companies, whether they're coming to us from campuses, whether they're coming via their organization or whether they are coming directly to our platform. Um, you know, learners are consistently looking for very similar things. They're looking for high quality learning. They're looking for a credential that is recognized in the job market. And they're looking to build skills which can help them further their careers, right? And that's what we are continuing to focus on. We've seen this result in a fairly strong growth in the market as well. And I was mentioning earlier that last year, the number of learners who came to Coursera and India grew by about 28%. It, uh, today we have about 19 million learners who come to Coursera in India 
uh, pre-pandemic it used to be about four, four and a half million learners. So the reason we've seen this growth and it's continuing, it's obviously slower than it was during the pandemic, but it's continuing because we are able to deliver the kind of value that learners are looking for. Right. Uh, like I was talking about the Indian EdTech overhaul, we saw the likes of Unacademy, Baiju's going offline again. Uh, does Coursera have any offline plans? Uh, no, we don't. Uh, we are very focused on what we are good at. We think being able to scale high quality learning through online is what we know well. Hopefully, this is where uh, we can deliver value to learners who come to our platform. And then in the future, as we bring more technology, as we possibly in, in, uh, you know, uh, integrate tools like generative AI into our platform, we will be able to deliver a personalized and an interactive learning experience as well but no offline plans. Great. Um, the uh, Indian education sector is considered to be one of the biggest, right? Because there's so much focus on IT engineering and these are high uh, yield fields. Where do you see this growing and how, how do you see the evolution happening from here on? Um, I mean, we're also seeing both industry, you know, uh, moving towards um, a lot of technology, a lot of data science roles, which is what is reflecting in the demand in higher education as well. In slightly more traditional sectors, you know, and I'm a mechanical engineering uh, engineer by education as well, the key thing is to also integrate new technologies into those areas, right? So mechanical engineering is no longer just about thermodynamics, but it is about mechatronics, for example, or it is about the integration of data into mechanical engineering. Civil engineering is about smart cities. It is not just about building traditional buildings. It is about ESG related skills. So I think we are enabling campuses to integrate some of these new age skills. We work with companies like um, LNT, for example, right? And LNT says, look, in a lot of our engineering projects, we are using drone technology. We are using predictive maintenance, not preventive maintenance. We are using IoT in a lot of our equipment. So how do you bring students into those roles who then have skills on some of these emerging technologies become important? And I think if you're able to do that, then some of the rush around, you know, the big focus on IT and on data, I think some of that starts to reduce and starts to balance out a little bit. Right. Um, you said you have about 19 million users right now, students on Coursera. Where do you see this number going in the next one year and in three years? Um, so these are both, so these are learners, which means that these are students in campuses, but also working professionals, you know, people like you and me who want to get ahead in our careers and want to build skills on Coursera. Um, last year it grew by about 28%. Um, you know, like I said, we are expecting it will become larger than Europe. I'm sure at some stage it will become largest in the world as well. It's a little hard to say whether that will be in two years or three years. But uh, yeah, I would imagine, you know, number of learners on Coursera will be largest in the world globally fairly soon. Cool. Thank you so much. It was lovely talking to you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.